Hello, this video I'm talking about Castle Panic, but I also own Dead Panic and Munchkin Panic. So rather than do three separate videos, I'm just going to talk about them all in this one, particularly so I can compare the various versions. But first of all, we start with the original Castle Panic. It's a relatively well-known game, you might be familiar with this one. Basically, it's a cooperative game um, where you are defending this castle. You've got these, these little constructs, you've got uh, six wall sections and six tower sections. Uh, whilst there are monsters who are represented by these uh, little triangle pieces who are moving in on the board towards your castle. When they hit a wall, they destroy it. But it also injures them when they hit the wall. So this goblin, he's only got one point of health. So when he hits the wall, it will kill him. Uh, this orc has two points of health. So when he takes a health point, he turns so that his current health is pointing towards the castle. Then when he hits his last one, he's dead. And this troll, we can see, he has three points of health. So he spins twice before he is killed. The player's objective is to kill all the monsters and these monsters, all these tokens, go into a cup or a bag at the beginning of the game and are drawn completely at random. So you just basically have to survive all of these tokens being drawn uh, and clear the board of monsters before your castle is destroyed. If all six castle structures, tower structures, are destroyed, you lose the game. Players are technically competing to be the master slayers so who can slay the most monsters, but that's not really relevant. Um, really you're just working together to defend the castle and it's, easy, it's best to just play it co-op as you just win as a group. The competitive version is the Munchkin version, I'll talk about it in a minute, but Munchkin is basically a hyper-competitive version of this. Um, so Castle Panic Standard I would just say is just, just play co-op and don't worry. You can, you can have the whoever is the Master Slayer at the end, um, but don't let that be the point of the game. The way it works is players will have a hand of cards, as these cards, um, which they will be playing. And as you can see, the board is made up into three colour zones. You have a red zone, a green zone, and a blue zone, and four rings. It's a circular, sort of like a dartboard. So we've got forest, archer, knight, and swordsman. And in players' hands, they will have knights, archers, swordsmen, whatever, of various colours. So here we've got a blue knight, which means that he can be spent to attack something in the blue, blue the knight ring of the blue zone, if you get my words out. Uh, green archer, so similarly, the archer ring of the green zone. Um, yeah, so, and, and they all, there's various other things. So there's uh, driving back, which pushes the monster back, and, and brick. If you get a brick and a mortar card, you can rebuild a damaged wall. Um, so there's a few other cards that do things, but primarily you'll be playing these cards, and you'll be swapping cards. Uh, you can you can swap a card with another player to try and have the best hand for the round where you currently are. You know, so you can attack the most monsters in your round, particularly in the swordsman ring, to stop them from taking out your castle. Your turn is fairly simple. First thing you do is you draw up to a number of cards, depending on the number of players. You then uh, can discard a card to draw, if you've got a useless card, to draw a fresh one. You can then trade cards with other players, or trade one card with another player, I believe. Um, then you can play as many cards from your hand as you want to kill as many monsters as possible. That should be the objective. Once you've done that, all monsters that are still on the board move inwards one ring towards the castle. And you then draw two new monsters from the pile and roll the dice. That's not a monster. Roll the dice to see which zone they're going, because each section... The game is also divided into six um, segments, as you can see by the six uh, pieces of the castle wall. And you roll the dice, take out a wall, why not, uh, to see which section. So that's four, so that's going to go in zone four there. Other than monsters in this monster bag, there are some action cards. So there's med monsters move one, so all monsters in the red zone move one. That's not good. Uh, plague knights, that's really bad, so that means everyone has to discard all the knight cards they have. Um, giant boulder, the giant boulder, you roll your number and the giant boulder storms through that zone, taking out all the monsters, but also destroying the first piece of wall or castle that it hits. Um, so that can be useful if it hits a big group of monsters, but otherwise it can just hurt you. And if you've got nothing there already, you can go right the way through to the other side and take out the one on the other side. can be bad. Uh, you also have a few boss monsters. So here we have the healer. Uh, he heals everyone. When he appears on the board, all the monsters on the board get healed. Uh, what else do we have? See if I can find... Here we go, the Orc Warlord. The Orc Warlord. Now, it's important to note, actually, I'm actually referring to the board. The board has got all this information written on it, so you've got turn order written on either side. This section here um, has the special tokens, what the special tokens do, although they're fairly self-explanatory. Um, but here's got the boss monsters, so I'm have to see. The Orc Warlord, uh, roll the die and place the Orc Warlord in the forest, then move all the monsters, including the Orc Warlord, in the same colour and one space closer to the castle. So he appears on the board and then goes, Get moving, you lazy dogs, and everyone moves closer to the castle, including himself. 
Um, so yeah, there's there's uh, four of those boss monsters who all have various varying effects when they appear on the board. The uh, game's really good. It's really uh, actually quite simple. You can see there's actually not a lot of components going on here. There's a lot of these tokens, but that's about it. And there's only sort of one type of card. Um, yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's really easy to teach. It's a really good cooperative game. It, it's um, one of those cooperative games that um, never, uh, I've no, at least I've ne never when I've played it, has it ever um, suffered from, from uh, sort of the leader bashing or leader syndrome. Uh, where one player is like, well, you should do this and this and this and this. Because your hand varies so much from turn to turn, you will never know what you can do. So it's impossible to coordinate too far in advance. All you can do is say, well, I can do this, you know, can somebody help me and so forth. There's never there's never a player sort of dictating everyone else's moves, as can happen. Particularly, I think Pandemic's quite bad for that. Um, especially I play Pandemic quite a lot, so it tends to be me saying, well, you need to do this and this and this and this and this. And I'm always looking about 10 moves ahead. Um, so I try and keep quiet in Pandemic. Uh, although when I keep quiet in Pandemic, we lose. So <laughs> it can get quite frustrating. But this is a game that doesn't have that. But yeah, I really like it. It's quite tense and quite manic. It can it can um, get a good jokey group session going. It's 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 just really it's just really good fun. Um, but let's look. As I say, this is a, a designed for co-op. Um, it does have the slight competitive element to it, and you're trying to compete to see. In the rules state, you're trying to compete to see who can kill the most. But as I say, it's not really there. However, they did bring out Munchkin Panic, which is definitely the competitive version of this. So let's look at that now. So this is Munchkin Panic, uh, and it is basically exactly the same game. Uh, the board is slightly more cartoony design, as do the pieces. Um, you've got your Munchkin dice, which has got your typical little Munchkin head uh, as the one. Uh, and the monsters are all Munchkin, recognisable monsters if you play Munchkin. So you have an undead horse here. Uh, you have the gazebo. Uh, there's the gazebo there, one of my favourite munchkin monsters. Uh, the hippogriff, the plutonium dragon. So they're all recognisable monsters from munchkin, um, as are a lot of the cards. So you have in your castle deck, as well as all your, your swordsmen, uh, your red swordsmen, your blue archers, all your, all your coloured swordsmen. You have the chicken on your head uh, curse. Uh, you have a super munchkin card, uh, the out to lunch cards. So you have a lot of recognisable uh, munchkin cards for munchkin players in there. So in the same way that um, Castle Panic has a competitive mode that it isn't really designed for, Munchkin Panic has a cooperative mode that again it isn't really designed for. Um, it's it's actually quite an interesting change. I played Munchkin Panic competitively and cooperatively and competitively works so much better by far. I would never recommend you play this co-op. Co um, you have to play it competitively, it doesn't work otherwise. Um, the reason I say that is because it's much more fun with the with the messing cards in there. So the curse, like I said, curse of chicken head, you can, curse you can play on another player. Um, you can there's more curses. The truly obnoxious curse. Help me out here. Steal someone's stuff. Um, the duck of doom. So yeah, there's cards in here to mess with the other players, um, as well as uh, yeah, lightning curse there. So there's, there's cards to mess with the other players. But in addition to your standard castle panic type deck, you also have this treasure deck. Now every monster is worth treasure. So Squidzilla here has got two yellow dots on him so he's worth two treasures whereas the undead horse is only worth one treasure. And when you gain treasure you take a card from the treasure deck and we've got here the singing and dancing sword. This is always largely equipment again recognizable from Munchkin if you play a Munchkin. So the singing and dancing sword, the cushion of Ponfusion, uh, at the back here we've got the helm of courage and the boots of butt kicking. But we also have monster enhancers. So we have enraged you know, from Munchkin, you play the monster enhancers to make to stop somebody from winning the game, to make the monsters tougher. So here we have enraged monster. Add three health to the monster under attack. Um, but what else have we got here? Humongous, humongous monster. Return all monsters on the board to full health. Um, so yeah, so you play. You have cards now that you can play. Treasure cards you can play to mess with the other players as well. So there's monster enhancers. But largely there will be equipment cards. But you have to equip equipment to people. So you have to be playing somebody who can use it. So I play this uh, red swordsman, then I might give them the potion of idiotic bravery um, to make them even tougher. Or I might give them the uh, the horny helmet. Maybe you can apply one piece of equipment to one uh, card that you're playing. So you can equip your. You now you can use the treasure cards to equip uh, your hero cards, um, which is interesting. Interesting dynamics. I mean, you sort of makes things uh, work in an interesting way. But importantly, instead of trading cards with each other, you can ask for help in combat. So you can say, 
hey, can somebody help me? So somebody else can play a card on your turn. Um, so they can either play an equipment card to one of your cards you've got in play, or they can play an, an extra um, person card to kill a monster, extra hero card, or castle card. Um, and as Munchkin, you can negotiate. So you're playing competitively. Like I say, always play this competitively. The castle, you can either try and defend the castle or not. So you can play competitively, but you've still got to defend the castle, which works fine. Or, as it, more often than not, I just play as the castle is a ticking clock. So when the castle is destroyed, the game ends. So if you're in the lead, you actually want the castle to be destroyed. Um, but yeah, the, once the castle is destroyed, it's, it's the, the game ends and whoever has the most points wins. And points are by the health of the monster. So this Squidzilla has got four health max, is his highest health, so he's worth four points if you kill him. And the Undead Horse is worth two points, the Gazebo is worth three, and so forth. The way treasure works is when you kill a monster, they've got the yellow dots on them, so the Squidzilla is worth two treasures. So if you killed him, you get four points and two treasures. But if you had help to kill him, you had to negotiate on that. So you either you negotiated with the player who helps you to either give them the treasure, or maybe one of the treasures, or two or both of the treasures, or you can take the treasure because you want the cards, and you can give them the trophy, give them the monster trophy, so they get the points. This is a tricky balance, you've got to try and figure out what you can spare and what you can't. Munchkin doesn't have a great reputation, I guess, amongst gamers. Um, it's an incredibly lucky game. Uh, it's random as hell, it's the most random game you possibly ever play. Um, but yeah, I, I do enjoy Munchkin. I don't, it's, you know, it's not a hardcore game, but it is. I do find it fun. Um, but a lot of people don't. This is not Munchkin. This is no. This is ultimately no more random than, say, Castle Panic is. If you like Castle Panic, I think you'll like this. It's just a, a competitive version of Castle Panic is the way I would view it. Um, but yeah, so don't let uh, you know a, a disinterested in Munchkin turn you off for this game. Yeah, you won't get a lot of the references, but it'll all, you know the mechanics will make sense to you. You'll understand why you're doing what you're doing. I think I'd be more inclined to say that fans of Castle Panic should get this rather than fans of Munchkin, because it's not that closely tied to Munchkin. I think if you like Munchkin, you, if you like Munchkin and Castle Panic, then yeah, just, this is a no-brainer. Um, but yeah, no, I, I think it's slightly more closer to Castle Panic than it is to Munchkin. Uh, in addition, it comes with, also, it does come with this bag, actually. This is, this, is, this is quite nice. The other Castle Panic didn't come with that, but this Munchkin uh, Panic comes with this bag um, to hold all your monsters. This doesn't have quite the range that Castle Panic does. It literally just has monsters um, and a handful of curses, which is monsters in green move one, um, monsters in red move one. They're, they're not that. They're not as varied. Um, the 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 contents is mostly monsters. The Castle Panic has obviously got the effect cards and the plague cards and the boss monsters. Uh, this doesn't have that, but it does have as a variable option, um, which I haven't actually played with very much, is the uh, the character cards. At the beginning of the game, every player gets dealt a random character. Um, so you could be a warrior. A warrior it means on your play cards phase use up to two weapons with each of your cards. So you can equip each of your castle cards with two um, treasure cards which is which is useful. Um, you can never have more than three treasure cards in your hand. If you have three at the end of your turn you have to give them away. So you can accumulate them but you have to spend them. Uh, your wizard once per turn during your play phase roll the die and move one monster on the board to another location on the board on a roll of a four to six. So you can zap the monsters about the board. Uh, the thief, when you draw up, you may take one castle card of your choice from another player's hand. So that's good. Um, the cleric, when you draw up, you may add three from the bottom of the castle discard pile. Elf, when you successfully help someone slay a monster, draw an extra treasure card from the deck. Um, so yeah, these are all just people that have, uh, just give you like a little boost or a bonus or a little thing you can do. Um, the halfling is probably the best one. At the end of the game, each treasure card in your hand is worth one point. So you can just hoard treasure cards at the end of the game and try and get um, extra points that way. But yeah, there's, there's, I haven't played with them much. They, they aren't amazing, but they are yeah, they are interesting. They, they work well enough. As I say, I really like this game. Um, the Munchkin flavour, you probably know whether you do or not. It ha does have to be played competitively. Um, I really don't think it works otherwise. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's basically, mechanically, it's exactly the same as Castle Panic. Um, it's just that you are, you know, you are now fighting to be uh, the biggest munchkin, or, or however the word, I think that's how it's worded. Dead Panic, however, is a completely different game. Dead Panic is, is not really, it's mechanically similar, but realistically it's nothing like either of these. So this is Dead Panic, and you can probably already see that whilst it's got the essence of Castle Panic, um, it already looks 
quite significantly different. For a start, it's got a lot more components, not least of all character cards and uh, all these tokens for everything. Um, basically, this is a co-op game that slowly turns into a team game. Um, but I'll talk about that later because that's one of the one of my gripes with the game, to be honest. You can see the board is basically the same as um, Castle Panic or Munchkin Panic in that it's broken up into six pie segments with various rings. So we have the woods, the clearing and the yard. So we actually have one less ring than we do in um, either of the other two games. But then the centre of the board, the main section of the board, is the cabin. And the cabin has got walls on all sides. Um, it has a front door section which goes on the front door spot. Oh, these stupid things fall out all the time. Um, but there's really no real reason for that. It doesn't do it. The door doesn't do anything. At least not that I've. I can't. You know. I, I can't find that it does anything. It does. It, the rules do say put the front door on the front door spot, but I've no idea why. Because you can move out of the windows and the zombies can crawl through the walls and break down the walls. It, it really makes no difference as far as I can tell, unless I've missed something. But the players take on um, characters trying to survive this zombie wave, and you get. Like I said, a variety of character cards here. Um, so you have Barbara, the uh, escaped convict, um, Julie, the delivery driver, Al, the construction worker. And you just have you get a, a character randomly, and they all have their own unique powers. Um, so we see David here. During unarmed melee combat, you may damage one zombie for one point uh, when you win. So you can do damage in in my unarmed. Normally, you can't do damage unless you've got at least some sort of uh, you know a two by four or something with you. Um, the police officer, once per turn, you may spend two bullets with one action, so you can fire twice for just one action. Um, the paramedic, spend two actions to move the injured to injury token on your character or a character in the same space as you back one space. Basically, remove an injury from somebody um, for two actions. That is the most useless power in the world. That is a terrible character power, it really is. In fact, I would, I would purposefully not play the game with this character because that is such an awful power. Um, it's it's such a waste of time. But anyway, yes, you get a character, uh, and your character, as, I, as they say on the thing, they can take two wounds before they get it. They take two wounds, and if they take a third one, uh, they die. But when you die, you flip your card over, take your, then you become a zombie. And then you take your two wounds, and you place them over two of these five powers to have zomb the powers that your zombie has. So we've got uh, plus one to all rolls. We'll talk about combat in a second. Uh, move one additional space. So you're a fast zombie. You win on ties. So, so you have two. You have two powers. Take your two wounds and put them over two powers to create your zombie. And then you're on the zombie team. So people start to die, and the and the um, the sorry the zombies. Uh, you become a zombie team, and then you're trying to help the zombies win. Um, the reason that's a, a gripe with the game is because it really takes the edge off of dying. Think well, I'm dying. Well, never mind. I'll be a zombie. That'll be fun because it is kind of fun to be a zombie. You get a couple of unique powers. You get basically a unique zombie um, that can do special things and, and attack the players. Um, and it's kind of yeah, it kind of takes the worry off. The game is a bit too hard, maybe, to have instant you know end of the game if someone dies. But you could have people die and just be removed. I would probably probably play without the zombie variant, maybe, just because it. I don't know. It just. It, 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 just, it just takes the edge off the game, I think. I think if you're dead, you have to be out. That really, you know, it really has to be dangerous to die. Um, whereas you don't get the, you don't get the panic, ironically, for the sale. The, the, if you just turn into a zombie and suddenly you're, you're still playing the game, you're just on a different team, then it takes away the, the threat um, to some degree. But anyway, how do the players win? Well, what the players want to do is whilst you are drawing tokens out of the bag to add zombies to the board, same as the previous two games, in here are three survivors and you're trying to find these survivors they will appear on the board as before and they will run to try and get into the cabin with you there's a good chance they'll die they have a zombie version on the other side um, so they might die but the reason you need them is because they are carrying the fees for three components you need to fix the radio if they die they just drop them on the board wherever they are and you can run out and pick them up but once you've got all three components little puzzle you put your radio together then you can radio for the rescue van, and the rescue van will show up on the board. All the players currently still alive have to get to the van, and then the van drives off. Um, I've played this before, where one or two players have got to the van, um, and basically it was worthwhile just letting the others get killed so that they could escape more easily. Because if they'd waited around, zombies would have swarmed the van, and 
Yeah, I get again. It just doesn't. It just doesn't quite work. There's the, the threat of death isn't in, isn't strong in this game for me. It just it just isn't quite there. So the way this works is each round, uh, somebody is the player one. Somebody has the bait token, which means that in draws, I believe the zombies will automatically come to them um, because they smell particularly tasty that turn. But then you go around the table, everyone taking two actions. Uh, and your actions can be to move, they can be to play cards, they can be to search for cards, um, they can be attack zombies, so, you know, there's, there's a variety of actions, but there's a list of them here in fact. So we have draw a cabin card, use a cabin card, move one space, trade, give or get one card, repair one crack, because as the zombies attack the walls, these crack tokens will appear. And if you get two cracks, if you get a second crack, then um, the wall breaks down and has to be rebuilt. Uh, you can perform and you can perform radio actions. So as the Castle Panic style, you are playing cards um, to attack the zombies, but you aren't getting these cards automatically. You have to search the cabin to find them. And you'll notice that this deck is much smaller um, than the other games. That's because these cards will, will sometimes last more than once. Um, so we have a chainsaw here. Now a chainsaw, uh, you can use it twice um, to slay one monster, or you can damage one monster for one point. And the way that works is if you've got a weapon, now as I said, David, the character who can fight un unarmed, but normally you can't. If you've got a weapon, you come out if you're in the same space as a zombie, every zombie has its own fight value. So a shambler, which is that sort of the lowest type of zombie, has got a fight value of seven. Uh, this, uh, where are we? A creeper, which is uh, which is one that basically is uh, crawling along the floor, has got a fight value of six. But their ability is that they pass through walls. So they find like cracks in the walls and just sneak into the cabin. A brawler has a fight value of eight. Uh, a sprinter has a fight value of seven, um, and they move twice. So the brawler wins on uh, ties, I believe. Yeah, there's a, he has a value of eight, but he wins on ties, whereas normally you win on ties. So there's one more. The brute. The brute has a value of nine, and he destroys walls automatically. He just smashes through. He's the big sort of bad zombie. But the way it works is you go out and you roll both the dice to try and beat or equal to the zombie's fight value. So I just check. I just had to check the rules quickly. Um, yeah, on a on a tr tie, um, nothing happens. It's just stalemate. So you have to beat the zombie's fight value to deal it a wound. And similar, if they rotate round as they've got wounds, if you get to the last wound, you just kill them. Um, unless you have a card. So as I say, this this chainsaw allows you to just kill a monster uh, zombie outright. But it only got t only got two uses. So you get to have to rotate it, and then it's useless. Other melee weapons. We've got a candlestick, and uh, you can re-roll one die during melee combat. So that stays in front of you. That doesn't doesn't break. Um, but you can re-roll one die during combat as long as you, whilst you're using that. Um, the tire iron plus one to your roll whilst you're using a tire iron. Uh, machete on a result of ten plus, the zombie's just killed just because you just got a machete, you just whack its head off or whatever. Um, but also in this deck there are guns, so you have a rifle, so you can fire out of the cabin in a straight line, or you can fire into adjacent zones if you're outside of the cabin because you can exit the cabin and move around. Um, if you want to pick up radio pieces, for example, or try and protect survivors. So a rifle has got two shots on it, similar to the chainsaw, and you rotate it to fire out the cabinet and shoot one zombie um, for uh, one damage, one point of damage when you fire the rifle. Uh, you have a crossbow, which is super good. You can fire it once, but then it has, but then it reloads for your next turn. So you can fire it once per turn. That's that's uh, useful. Uh, shotgun has three shots on it. Uh, after all shots are fired, you can flip it and you can use it as a club, so you can just turn it over. When a once you once you've so it's empty on ammo, so you flip it over, which means that you've got a club, so you can still fight in hand-to-hand -hand combat. But once you use a club once, it's destroyed; it gets broken, um, which is um, it's, it's still useful. Uh, and there's nutrition bars and energy drinks, uh, helmets um, which help protect you from damage. Uh, and there's a few other random sort of things in here. Mostly it's weapons. Um, Oh, there's a uh, there's there are some uh, zombies that were hiding in the cabin. You open a cupboard and find a zombie in there, and um, so it can be bad. It's, it's, it's only a couple of cards like that, I think. Um, but yeah, so you're going to search the cabin to try and find these equipment cards. But yeah, all players take their two actions, whatever they may be, and then once everyone's taken an action, you draw an event card. Uh, now, an event card um, is is determines what zombies appear or other effects that are happening. So we have the horde is coming. So draw four tokens. Roll the die and place all four tokens in the same wood space. So there's a big horde of zombies appearing in one spot of the board. And um, that's the zombies appearance for that one. Next one is how how do you kill the dead? All wounded zombies return to full health 
and you place a number of zombies equal to the number of players minus one. So you place a bunch of zombies again, same similar to a uh, castle connect. You roll the dice and they appear in that zone in the woods. Uh, what else we got? Pair, draw two tokens, roll die, and place both tokens in the same wood space. That's not quite as bad as the horde. Um, Z O M G. Draw six tokens, one at a time, place one token in each arc in the woods as you draw it. So one in each section, so you're surrounded. So yeah, these determine where the zombies appear as well as a number of other uh, you know, other random sort of effects that can happen. Some of them are really nasty. You can really get destroyed by that deck quite early on. Um, once that's been done, all the zombies move in as before and the bait token moves to the next player and you start another round, taking all your actions and so forth. As you can see, this has a lot of similar mechanics to Castle Panic, but it's a very, very different game. Um, it, it really, I mean, it's got the the board design um, and the card play elements, but but it really doesn't feel like Castle Panic at all. Um, it is it is its its own thing, and to be honest, I'm not sure I love it. I've played it a few times now, and it, it that as I've said before, that sort of turning into a zombie thing. I feel doesn't work. The threat of death just isn't there. It would make more sense if you had to all get out alive. Like there was a big penalty for somebody dying. Like the game ended if somebody died, you had to stay alive. But then it's way too hard to keep everyone alive. Somebody's bound to die in this game because at some point somebody will run out and be like, I've I've got to draw the zombies off because zombies will follow to people. They won't immediately move in. They'll move to people first if possible. So you, somebody might run out and go, okay, I take the sacrifice, run out and draw all the zombies around so that everybody else can perform tasks and stuff. Um, and that that'll happen often, but yeah, it's just it's just it's really not there. It's really really difficult compared to the other two games. Um, really difficult to win. Um, and I, I I don't know. It just it just doesn't doesn't quite work. It, as I it's just, it's just it's just not the. I don't feel the tension that I do with say Castle Panic. Castle Panic is. It's quite a tense co-op game. That's that, that sort of feel of, um, you know, I'm not sure we can do this. Whereas with this, it feels like you get that, oh, we're all going to die. But it feels like it doesn't really matter, as I said, because, you know, you just become a zombie. Or you can choose to play with you becoming a zombie. Um, if anything, it's easier to win the less players' characters there are. So you want some people to die, because it's much easier to get to pick up the radio parts and get to the van. Um, if there's only, like, two of you still alive um yeah just it's just i think it's just that element that's that's turning me off that's that's not quite working for me um the card play works okay although it's very random as to whether you can be useful on your turn and it's impossible to plan ahead you can't think you, know, you don't have enough cards you can at most on your turn draw two cards but that means that you've used up both your actions and therefore have nothing left to do um so yeah it can be quite I don't know. I, I, I think I liked it fine. My friends I played it with liked it more than I did. Um, but yeah, it is it is really hard and it really just doesn't. I don't I don't know. If, I don't know if you like this one. I would suggest if you're interested in this, trying it first. If you can try it before you buy it, I would do that because I wouldn't guarantee you'll love this one. Um, and I wouldn't compare it to Castle Panic at all. Uh, if you like Castle Panic, then this is you know, this isn't the same thing. Don't don't just go straight for this. Um, don't think oh I love zombies and I love Castle Panic. No, it doesn't doesn't work that way. Um, really, it's 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 I don't know. It just doesn't quite have that feeling to it. So that is the uh, Panic trilogy. I did all uh, three games in one there. I hope that hasn't made this video too long. Um, but yeah, no, that's that's the Panic trilogy. Uh, I've been interested in the comments below which is your favourite if you happen to have, have played the three of those. If you're intrigued enough to want to play one of them, um, then do give it a try. If you're not sure, then I would say start with Castle Panic. It is the original, after all. Um, Dead Panic is a very different game, as I've said. Uh, please do like and subscribe to my channel and check out all my other videos, my other board game reviews. I'm trying to do a, uh, put a board game review out every week. I'm also now doing a video diary every Monday, um, which I've done for a few weeks now. Uh, and I'll probably, probably try, try, and, try, and try and keep that up. Uh, then I do talks about um, film and TV and, and sort of geeky-ish things. Um, and so that's all that's up is all a bit random. I'm trying to do the video diary Monday and one of these a week, and then everything else is, is a bit random. Um, but yeah, no, please do check out the rest of my channel. You can find in the description below links to my Facebook and my Twitter, which you can find me on there. 
Um, and yeah, no, I hope you enjoyed this. Hope you like the look of these games and uh, are interested in, in playing some games. So yeah, please do um, check them out. Uh, thanks for watching. The end.